Hi, my name is Jacqueline and I'm a graduate student in the biochemistry department here at Western University and I work out of the Robarts Research Institute. Hi, my name is Zach. I'm a graduate student here at the Western University in the Neuroscience program and I work at the Robarts Research Institute. So today we're going to be doing a DNA extraction from strawberries. But first, let's talk about what DNA is. DNA essentially is the manual to life. It's what makes dogs dogs, cats cats, so it's ultimately what makes us human. It's also the reason why some people have brown hair, why some people have blue eyes, why some people have blonde hair. Uh, it what make people tall, people small, so it provides us with our unique features. But where exactly is this DNA found? Well, it's found within your cells. So cells are what make up parts of our body. So we have skin cells, we have blood cells, we have hair cells, we have eye cells, so on and so forth. Now we have trillions of cells within our body and within each of these cells is a strand of DNA. Now that's shocking because DNA is about two meters long, so that's taller than I am. So how does DNA actually get packaged within these cells? DNA is packaged in your cell just like string is around a spool. So this is how essentially DNA would look like within a cell. All DNA is packaged into these chromosomes. So we have 23 pairs of chromosomes within our body. 23 of these chromosomes actually come from your mom. And the other 23 come from your dad. So all the DNA within your body simply comes from your parents, which is why you would have some features that look like your mother and some features that would look like your father. So why do people study DNA? Well, there's a lot we can learn about it. So in these chromosomes that Zach was talking about, it is possible for there to be mutations, or what that means is that something about the DNA changes. And so if we study these mutations, we can actually learn a whole bunch about diseases and more about different organisms, such as plants, animals, and even humans. So when you think about mutations, you can actually think of different movies and TV shows that talk about these things. So if you think of the Jurassic Park series, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or even X-Men, all of these movies talk about mutations. So when we study DNA in a research lab, we can actually learn a lot when we look specifically at these mutations. So we can learn more about diseases such as cancer or cystic fibrosis, or we can look at some more interesting things such as why individuals have red hair. So some of the scientists and doctors that have actually studied DNA and mutations can be found in the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame. Dr. Lapchi Choi was the individual who discovered the gene and the mutations that caused cystic fibrosis. Dr. Murray Barr was the individual who did research into chromosomes, and specifically the chromosomes that differentiate between if you're going to be a male or a female. And Dr. Michael Smith invented a technique that will actually let you mutate DNA on purpose, so you can study some interesting diseases and characteristics. So in order to study DNA, we actually have to get DNA out of the cells. And so that's the experiment that we're going to be doing today. We're going to be taking DNA or extracting DNA out of strawberry cells. So medical research is an exact science, which means we have to be very careful when following protocols. So when we're doing our experiment today, we want to make sure that we're following the steps in order and being precise. So why would we extract DNA from a strawberry? Well, strawberries have a lot more DNA within each cell. So humans have a little bit less, but strawberries have a little bit more. This makes it easy for us to extract DNA from strawberries. So our first step is to measure out 40 milliliters of water in our tube. With your partner, take your 40 milliliters of water and your bag of salt and pour that water into the bag. So the next step of our experiment is to take up 10 milliliters of dish soap and add it to our bag of salt and water.
So now that we've added the soap, salt, and water into the plastic bag, it's important that we mix all these reagents or these chemicals up together so that we have a nice extraction solution that we can use to break apart the strawberry cells. So with your partner, remove the leaves from the strawberry to prepare them to go into the extraction solution. Okay, next, take your strawberries and put them into the extraction solution. Close the bag, making sure that all the air is out of the bag. So do you have all of that air out of the bag? Now this is a very important step because if there's any air left in the bag, it is possible for your bag to leak and then your strawberry extraction will go everywhere and your experiment won't work. So if you're sure all of the air is out of the bag, then between you and your partner, you can begin to crush up the strawberries. And so if you can use your hand to really get those big chunks, but if you're finding that a little difficult, if you want, you can use the tube that you were using earlier to help with the squishing. The next step is we're going to filter the strawberry solution into your cup. So what you're going to do is your partner is going to take a cheesecloth and put that cheesecloth over the cup, hold, hold it down tightly, as well as they're going to make a well right in the middle so you have a place to pour your strawberry solution. So take your strawberry solution, open the bag, and very slowly start pouring the strawberry solution into the cup. Now you may have some chunks left over from your mushing. So what you want to do is you want to take these chunks out of your cheesecloth and put it into a garbage cup. and then you can just continue pouring. So now that we have our strawberry extraction solution in our cup, it's time to transfer it back into our tube from earlier. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour out about 30 milliliters of our extraction solution back into our tube.
So it's okay if it goes a little bit over with all of the bubbles, and if you have a little bit less, that's okay, but just aim for somewhere around this mark. So all of our extracted strawberry DNA is now sitting in our tube, but it would be a lot more interesting if we could actually see the DNA. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add 5 milliliters or 1 teaspoon of rubbing alcohol into our tube. Now it's very important at this step to not shake up your tube. You just want to let it sit. Okay, so we're going to have to wait two minutes. But what you're going to notice in your tube is that there's these two layers. You have an alcohol layer at the top here, and then your extraction solution is at the bottom. Now what that alcohol layer is actually doing is it's pulling the DNA into that solution such that we can actually extract the DNA from that solution. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your stir stick and you're going to put it into the alcohol solution and you're going to pull out all your DNA. And so all this white stuff is your DNA. And so with that, you have successfully extracted DNA from strawberry cells. And so the experiment that we just went through is actually something that we use on a normal day-to-day -day basis in the lab. So I extract DNA from blood cells. And I extract DNA from brain cells. And so with that, you now know a scientific technique and are one step closer to becoming a researcher.